Hey Kaiju fans, I'm Kyoda Aikino, and today we're taking a look at the Millennium Mechagodzilla Kiryu. The third distinct incarnation of Mechagodzilla, Kiryu was introduced following the successful revival of Mothra and King Ghidorah in 2001, appearing in Godzilla Against Mechagodzilla and Godzilla Tokyo SOS, both directed by Masaki Tezuka. The Millennium version of the King of the Monsters robotic double incorporates the genes and skeleton of the deceased original Godzilla from 1954. This mecha isn't just an anti-Godzilla superweapon, but a self-aware and existentially conflicted one. Thanks to the DNA computers meant to improve his processing power, there's a literal ghost in this machine. Kiryu's name is a compound of two kanji meaning machine, usually a large one, and dragon, creating a descriptive yet distinctive moniker for this version of the robot. Mechagodzilla is only said twice in Godzilla against Mechagodzilla, once a piece by Tokumitsu Yuhara and his daughter Sara, and never spoken at all in Tokyo SOS. Kiryu also carries the military designation Multipurpose Fighting System Type 3, following the JSDF convention of naming weapons after the year in which they were introduced. This full designation is often shortened to just MFS 3, or Type 3 Kiryu. Artists Shinji Nishikawa, Yasushi Torisawa, and Hiroshi Maruyama submitted concept art for the new Mechagodzilla. Ultimately, Nishikawa's designs would win out, with Maruyama credited for additional design works. Nishikawa gave Kiryu's armor some of the qualities of bone, such as spine and rib-like patterns, likening it to the Ultra Series monster Sibozu. His initial concept for the character even bore a yellow, bone-colored hue, though Masaki Tezuka preferred a more traditional silver coloration. Nishikawa's fourth draft for Kiryu was briefly considered as the final concept, but he then altered the head's overall design. Special effects director Yuichi Kikuchi suggested that Kiryu's eyes shift from yellow to red when he was possessed by the spirit of the first Godzilla, intending for the red lines on his cheeks to resemble tears of blood. Shinji Nishikawa was also responsible for the design of Kiryu's back unit. A 40 centimeter, 1 5th scale model of Kiryu with a detachable back unit was created as a reference for the construction of the mecha's suit, based on Nishikawa's finalized design. It makes a cameo in the film itself on a table in the Defense Agency of Science and Technology. A team of modelers from Star Train, supervised by Shinichi Wakasa, created the suit. Creating Godzilla foes was old hat for this company, as they'd already made Orga and Megagiris. For stunt sequences too difficult to execute through submation, one half-scale Kiryu and Godzilla models were created. They appear in at least two scenes. Kiryu's King Kong vs. Godzilla-esque tail swing, for which they were attached to a spinning base, and the monsters plummet into the ocean. A highly detailed CG model of Kiryu's suit was also employed for several shots during his transport and descent into Shinagawa to create movement which was impossible for the suit or scale model. The close-ups of Kiryu's jet boosters in this scene are also purely CG. Shinji Nishikawa returned for Tokyo SOS to design Kiryu's new weaponry. Star Train and Shinichi Wakasa partially remodeled the suit for the mech to reflect Nishikawa's final concepts. In light of difficulties with filming combat scenes in the previous film, the team attempted to reduce the weight of the suit with the new components. The suit was also repainted with a black tinge at the wishes of special effects director Eiichi Asada in order to give it a gunmetal finish. For the scene in which Yoshito Chujo is ejected from Kiryu's cockpit, a full-size model of its hatch was used, composited over over blue screen footage of the suit's backside. Lastly, the Tokyo SOS suit returned for live-action segments of the pachinko game CR Godzilla 3ST Battle in 2006. Although Dr. Serizawa gave his life to kill the original Godzilla in 1954 with the Oxygen Destroyer, Japan still found itself threatened by other monsters such as Mothra and Gaira in the following decades. In 1999, a second Godzilla landed in Tateyama and shrugged off the Japanese Xenomorph Self-Defense Force's most advanced weapons. Their anti-Megalosaurus force proposed dredging up the skeleton of the first Godzilla from Tokyo Bay and using it as a framework for constructing a robot to combat the new Godzilla. They inserted cloned DNA from the bones into the quasi-organic computer controls to take over subconscious motor control functions for the crew. Akana Yashiro, a former Mazer cannon operator who had been demoted after sideswiping her commanding officer during the Tateyama battle, was selected as the pilot. Completed in 2003, the machine, nicknamed Kiryu, sortied when Godzilla surfaced at Hakijima. It was a one-sided fight, with Godzilla too bewildered to respond. 
Just before Akane could finish him off with the Absolute Zero Cannon, he bellowed a roar that shook Kiryu to the core, causing him to remember when he used to be Godzilla. As Godzilla slipped back into Tokyo Bay, Kiryu proceeded to trash Yokohama until he ran out of power. Hastily recalled, Kiryu received quite a few weapon upgrades in addition to new computer control software routines. When Godzilla appeared in Tokyo a few days later, the JXSDF tried stopping him without Kiryu's help, but to no avail. With Akane at the mech's control again, Kiryu entered the battle in dramatic fashion. The second battle went well until Godzilla diverted a blast of the Absolute Zero Cannon, damaging Kiryu's receiver in the process. After one of the White Herons replenished Kiryu's energy, Akane entered one of his maintenance hatches to pilot him from the inside. This time she flew Godzilla into Tokyo Bay, holding his mouth shut while charging the Absolute Zero Cannon. The resulting underwater blast destroyed the weapon, and Godzilla retreated with a massive wound in his chest. In 2004, the JXSDF sent Akane to America for further flight training. Kyosuke Akiba took over her place as Kiryu's pilot in case Godzilla reappeared. The mech underwent heavy repairs, including the replacement of nearly all of his weapon systems. This included the Absolute Zero Cannon, as the JXSDF was unable to procure an artificial diamond large enough to build a second one. Mothra's tiny priestesses, the Shobijin, appeared to Professor Shinichi Chujo and claimed that building Kiryu using the bones of the original Godzilla was a violation of the natural order, and was also responsible for luring the current Godzilla to Japan. They offered Mothra's services to defend the country instead. Since Mothra had attacked Japan in 1961, Prime Minister Hayato Igarashi declined the Shobijin's offer when Chujo explained the situation to him. However, he vowed to end the project as soon as Kiryu destroyed Godzilla. When Godzilla attacked Tokyo again, Mothra rushed into battle with him. When she began to falter, the Prime Minister ordered Kiryu to back her up. Mothra's twin larvae arrived on the scene as well. Nonetheless, Godzilla damaged Kiryu's transmitter and killed the adult Mothra. The enraged larvae and the JX XSDF held him off long enough for Chujo's nephew, Kiryu Mechanic Yoshito, to enter a maintenance hatch and make the necessary repairs. Before Kiryu returned to the fight, a blast of Godzilla's ray warped the door, leaving Yoshito trapped inside. With a combination of his new Spiral Claw and Triple Hypermazer, Kiryu defeated Godzilla by targeting his chest wound. When Akiba ordered him to finish the job, however, Kiryu broke free of his control and flew Godzilla out to sea instead. White Heron pilot Azusa Kisaragi shot open the maintenance hatch, and Kiryu rotated to allow Yoshito to escape, displaying a farewell message on one of his screens. He then plunged into the depths with his organic counterpart and shut down for good, allowing himself to finally rest in peace while ensuring Godzilla would survive. Kiryu typically opened a fight with a hail of fire from his back unit. In Godzilla against Mechagodzilla, it had Type 95 470mm multipurpose guided missiles loaded into its sides, and Type 87 680mm multiple interlocking rockets into its front cannons. In Tokyo SOS, these were upgraded to Type 98 320mm missiles and Type 4 rockets, respectively. They had little effect on Godzilla, although they did a number on Yokohama when Kiryu went berserk. After Godzilla smashed its cannons, Akane launched the rest of the original back unit at him to gain some distance. The cannons on the second back unit could be launched individually. While Godzilla shot down the first, the second floored him with a massive explosion. Kiryu had twin railguns attached to each of his wrists, Type Zeros in Godzilla against Mechagodzilla, and Type Fours in Tokyo SOS. Like his back unit weapons, they excelled at urban destruction, but not at damaging Godzilla. Kiryu's right hand Type Zero railgun was equipped with a Mazer Blade, which easily broke Godzilla's skin before delivering a powerful electric shock. Unfortunately, it didn't stand a chance against his atomic breath. Kiryu had a Type 99 double Mazer Cannon, or Twin Mazer Cannon, in his mouth. Aside from his chest-mounted weapons, it was Kiryu's most potent option against Godzilla at range, especially when fired at his eyes or chest scar. Kiryu's ultimate weapon was the Type 3 Absolute Zero Cannon, which, as its name suggested, could freeze a target to Absolute Zero, effectively smashing its atoms. However, it required significant charging time, giving Godzilla an opening to attack the first time Akane successfully used it. The second blast, fired underwater, left Godzilla with a massive chest wound and led to his retreat. It also destroyed the massive artificial diamond powering the weapon, forcing the JXSDF to replace it with the Type 4 Triple Hyper Mazer Cannon. Used in tandem with the Double Mazer Cannon, it took all the fight out of Godzilla, allowing the Mothra larvae to cover him in webbing. In Tokyo SOS, Kiryu's right hand could transform into the Type 4 Anti-Beast Drilling Device, or Spiral Claw. Aimed at Godzilla's abdomen, it had a devastating effect on the monster, leaving him open to the Triple Hyper Mazer Cannon. 
Since Godzilla consistently let Kiryu make the first move, Akane and Hayama could have saved themselves a lot of trouble if they had just led with his most powerful weapons. Of course, their hesitancy likely had more to do with tokusatsu conventions than JXSDF combat doctrine. <laughs> Aircraft called the White Herons, or Shirasagi, transported Kiryu into battles, replenished his energy with a microwave transmitter, and provided fire support. Akane and Hayama also piloted Kiryu from inside White Herons. In Tokyo SOS and Godzilla Rulers of Earth, Kiryu could deploy extremely strong metal wire from his body to bind another monster in conjunction with the claws on his chest hatch, allowing him to transport them over long distances. Kiryu was an extraordinary brawler. His repertoire included open-handed strikes, tail whips, powerful throws, and on one memorable occasion, a high-speed ram which left him completely unharmed. Kiryu was agile enough to duck under a blast of Godzilla's atomic breath, then leapt over his head to deliver a counterattack. His pilots also used his jet boosters to help execute a spinning throw and evade another atomic ray. Though Kiryu was capable of flight, he had limited range and required the White Herons to transport him to Godzilla's location. Akane and Hayama rarely used his jets during battle, although Akane carried Godzilla out to Tokyo Bay and Kiryu flew far enough to sink both Godzilla and himself in the Pacific Ocean. Though resistant to Godzilla's physical blows, Kiryu was often knocked around by the monster's atomic breath, and damage to his control system prevented him from operating on two occasions. Though Akane was able to pilot Kiryu from the inside in 2003, and Chujo repaired it in 2004, the JXSDF had to sacrifice additional personnel to keep Godzilla distracted. Kiryu's energy reserves can only last for two hours of combat, or less if he uses the Absolute Zero Cannon. In addition, his DNA computers have a tendency to ignore kill orders against Godzilla and assume control of the machine. Godzilla against Mechagodzilla has a number of parallels to the acclaimed anime series Neon Genesis Evangelion. The most obvious is the plan to divert Tokyo's electricity to revive Kiryu, which closely resembles Operation Yashima from Episode 6 of Evangelion, in which Japan's electricity is rerouted to a particle cannon operated as a sniper rifle by Eva Unit 1's pilot Shinji Ikari. Other parallels include Kiryu and the Evangelions both being cybernetically enhanced remains of giant creatures developed to fight those creatures, both Mecha being prone to going berserk and having limited internal power reserves, a female pilot who feels that her only worth or purpose lies in piloting her Mecha, a scene in which a female lead has to enter a Mecha through a maintenance hatch on its exterior, and a motherless child whose father oversees the Mecha's missions from the home base. Kiryu has a split-second cameo in Godzilla Final Wars in the form of an 8-inch Bandai figure. As with many of the kaiju in this scene, it's unclear whether a real Kiryu ever existed in this continuity. Kiryu made his video game debut in 2002 with Godzilla Destroy All Monsters Melee for the GameCube and Godzilla Domination for the Game Boy Advance, if you lived in Japan. Elsewhere in the world, he was replaced with the Heisei Mecha Godzilla, with the exception of the 2003 Xbox version, which featured both of them. He has since appeared in the rest of the Pipeworks Godzilla games, a trio of pachinko games, Godzilla for the PS3 and 4, Godzilla Kaiju Collection, and City Shrouded in Shadow. Kiryu was a prolific member of IDW Comics' Kaiju roster, appearing in Godzilla Ongoing, The Half-Century War, Cataclysm, Rulers of Earth, and Oblivion. These versions appeared to be purely mechanical creations, though Ongoing and Half-Century War allude to his origin from the films by mentioning that he was built using skeletal schematics from Godzilla and possibly built with pieces of Godzilla inside of him, respectively. Kiryu and Godzilla had a shaky relationship throughout the various IDW continuities, sometimes fighting and sometimes teaming up against alien invaders. Their most unique battle took place in Oblivion, with a miniature Kiryu squadron taking on Godzilla in the Atlantic Ocean. The idea of the original Godzilla battling his successor predates Godzilla against Mechagodzilla. In 1994, following a proposal by Shogo Tomiyama, Kazuki Omori and Shinji Nishikawa wrote stories to end the Heisei series along these lines. Titled Godzilla vs. Godzilla, Godzilla vs. Ghost Godzilla, and Godzilla vs. Baragiris at various points, they all featured the hostile spirit of the 1954 Godzilla, though the methods through which he took physical form varied. Ultimately, Toho decided that three consecutive opponents with Godzilla in their name would be Overkill. A link to the original film would stay, however, with the Oxygen Destroyer spawning a new monster, Destroya. The title card for Godzilla against Mechagodzilla seems to allude to the Ghost Godzilla concept, briefly reading Godzilla against Godzilla before adding a Mecha. 
Kiryu shares some similarities with Cyber Godzilla from Godzilla the series, being a cybernetically revived Godzilla forced to do battle with his living successor, though their roles are reversed with Cyber Godzilla being a villain and Kiryu being heroic. In Asahi Sonorama's tie-in book for Tokyo SOS, director Masaki Tezuka and Shogo Tomiyama acknowledge the interpretation that Kiryu is the current Godzilla's father, although they stress that it's not necessarily canon. While copyright-wise, the character still falls under the Mechagodzilla mark, the name Kiryu is, or at least used to be, trademarked by Toho, as seen in the copyright information for the game Godzilla Unleashed. Peculiarly, a different version of the Mechagodzilla copyright icon using Art of Kiryu is featured in the Japanese GameCube version of Destroy All Monsters Melee. For the Xbox version, he was given a separate icon under the name Mechagodzilla MFS3, which was used once more for Save the Earth and Never Again. All official media since then simply used the default Mechagodzilla icon for Kiryu. In Ernest Cline's 2011 novel Ready Player One, a sinister CEO pilots a digital Kiryu during the final battle for control of the Oasis, the world's most popular virtual reality game. The protagonist, Wade Watts, handily defeats him by transforming into the original Ultraman. For the 2018 film adaptation, however, artist Jared Krzyzewski designed a new Mechagodzilla, with Toho recommending that he base it on Noriyoshi Orai's teaser poster for Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2. That's all there is for Kiryu. Thank you for watching.